All right, so this is a suggestion via Patreon. The name of the video is, uh, what is the difference between bees, wasps, and hornets? They're frightening, all of them. We need them to survive. Vegans don't like them very much, I, I, I've heard. Um, but other than that, they're frightening. Let's let's jump into it. <laughs> um, the name of the channel is, uh, today I found out. Let's get it, guys. In the video today, we're answering a viewer question because Mike A asks us, what is the difference between bees, wasps, and hornets? Right. There are many similarities and differences between our little wing-whipping friends. For starters, they can all sting you. That Across said, you pain. may derive some solace in the fact that when certain of them sting humans, they die. Although it's not true that they do that when they sting other animals. The barbed huh. stingers on honeybees particularly end up getting lodged in our soft flesh, ripping out their backsides when they try and get away after stinging you. When I mean, that sounds like retribution, to be honest. It does. And they sting most other animals, that simply doesn't happen. Further, all three live in hives or combs. Ah, uh, so that's why they haven't learned yet to stop stinging humans. Uh, because if they are stinging other animals, it's, it's just okay. It's, you know, it's all willy-nilly, apparently. Um, so that's the reason why, like, evolution hasn't, like, evolved them out of stinging us. These humble abodes are always in cooler and sheltered areas, often within the shade of trees. Bees, wasps, and hornets all proliferate in warm weather, their hives oh. growing in the spring and the early summer. By late summer, food becomes scarce, and that's when they, especially wasps and hornets, start finding their way to human food and your picnic. While the right. colors are all pretty similar, brown and black, yellow, and maybe some white on bees, wasps, and hornets, the markings, they do differ. This is where okay. the insects we all tend to lump into the same category flying stinging and scary begin to show their differences let's start with a humble bee bees are fairy pollen collectors who rarely ever have any need to interact with humans yeah. as the expression as busy as a bee insinuates worker bees usually the only type of bee that most people see spend their lives going to and from the hive acquiring nectar and pollen on their bodies during their trips. They play an integral part in the pollination of various plants, and some of them they provide us with tasty honey. They feed the acquired nectar to their young, developing the new generation of bees. They also protect the queen bee, allowing her to lay eggs. There are over 25,000 known bee species, but the two most common types of bees are honeybees and bumblebees. Both produce wax, but, and I know this is going to come as a shock, only the honeybee produces honey. Okay. Another big difference between the two is that the bumblebee is nearly double the size of the honeybee. Bumblebees are fat, at least in bee terms, and they're hairy. Their size, relative to their wingspan, gives rise to the myth that science can't explain how they're able to fly. Honeybees are more sleek. They both are yellow with black stripes, although the bumblebee often has a red, orange, or white tail. Okay, this is going to sound weird. Do bumblebees sting? I'm referring to like those the big, gigantic ones with the small wings, the ones that he's referring to. Like these things are all over like my back deck, right? And I I kind of ignore them because I think they don't sting. But I'm guessing they probably do sting now that he's kind of talking about it. And that frightens me even more. So so you know, if you don't see me one day, I've been stung and I'm in the hospital, apparently. <sighs> Additionally, honeybees live in large colonies, topping out at 25,000 bees, while bumblebees tend to build their nests underground, although their nests have also been found in walls, and they're often found in tunnels constructed by other animals. Their colonies are much smaller than bumblebees, only numbering into the hundreds. Wasps, unlike bees, are aggressive and predators. There are over 30,000 species of wasps, and they are distinguishable from bees by their pointed lower abdomens and narrow waist. They also have little to no hair on their bodies, as opposed to bees, and they don't play much of a role in the pollen nation of plants. Their legs are shiny, slender, and shaped like cylinders. All wasps hunt for food, and they build nests for shelter. Me, what exactly me, right? they prey on and how they build their nests depends on the type of wasp. There are two general types of wasps, social and solitary. Social wasps build colonies and start from scratch every spring, never nesting in the same spot twice. They design their home out of chewed-up wood fibers and their own saliva. The nests may hold up to 5,000 wasps and are typically found in protected spaces like attics and side of walls or under decks. Social wasps eat many different types of things. They are omnivorous, including fruits, plants, human food, and other insects. 
Solitary wasps do not form colonies and live underground in tubular mud nests. There's no caste system, as in the queen cares for its own young. The queen seeks out prey, flies, bee larva, cicadas, there's actually a species of wasp known as cicada killers, and they paralyze them with their sting. They take the still living insect back to the nest and feed it to their lover. It's right. during the late summer that wasps begin to get aggressive. This is due to the fact that the worker wasp's job is done for the year and they're literally waiting to die. After taking care of the queen and feeding the new generation of worker wasps, the old ones, they're now useless. They become disorientated and begin to venture away from the nest in search of food and something sweet. As absurd as this sounds, these wasps have nothing left to live for besides satisfying their sweet tooth, so they become aggressive, bold, and persistent. They'll and that's why they just instantly come whenever you're doing like a barbecue. I'm guessing. Lands on a human hand that's holding an ice cream cone. They'll dive into a can of soda. They'll munch on a half-eaten apple. In fact, in September of 2013, the British Red Cross warned citizens that wasps were getting drunk on fermented fruit and were going out in search of more. Joe Mulligan of the Red Cross said to the British newspaper The Independent in 2013, It's hilarious that now worker wasps have finished their life's work. All they are now doing is feasting on fermented fruit and getting drunk. All that being said, wasps are not just pests, but they benefit humanity in some way. They prey on other pest insects and have actually been used by the agricultural industry as an effective means to control crop pests, resulting in much more environmentally friendly ways to do this over many pesticides. Hornets are actually a species of wasp. Hey, a Hornets differ form. from other wasps in that their stings are more venomous. They also tend to attack for food as a colony and their nests are aerial as opposed to many wasp species. The giant Asian hornet, native to parts of Russia, China, Vietnam... Yeah, that's the one that came here and everyone was frightened, guys. Mainly because of how we named them in this country. The mountains of Japan can grow to about two inches long with a wingspan of about four to five inches. It is the world's largest and most venomous wasp. It is colloquially known as the yak killer due to the venom's ability to dissolve the tissue of even the largest of mammals. Because the honeybee is, on an individual level, incapable of harming the giant Asian hornet, and just a handful of giant Asian hornets are capable of decimating an entire hive of honeybees, the Japanese honeybee oh. has come up with an alternate strategy to stopping the mass destruction of their populace by the hornets. When a giant Asian hornet is detected, first the honeybee will emit a pheromone that the hornet can pick up, and it basically says, I see you. The scouting hornet might then leave. If not, and the hornet continues towards the hive, the honeybees will ball the hornet, essentially surrounding it completely with as many bees as possible. They will then exert themselves as much as possible in order to raise their body temperatures. Inside the ball, the temperature will rise rapidly, while simultaneously the carbon dioxide levels will also increase. Once Absolutely. the temperature inside the ball passes 115 degrees Fahrenheit or 46 degrees Celsius, it exceeds what the hornet can tolerate, but is still well under what the honeybees can handle. The combination of heat and low oxygen level will eventually kill the giant Asian hornet. Several of the honeybees will likely die before the hornet does, and this means of defense it isn't effective against a large number of giant Asian hornets. However, it does work well. I mean, that's a great security system. The fact that they have figured that out is absolutely amazing. Against eliminating the scouting giant Asian hornets. This can potentially scouting. stop a large-scale attack from ever taking place. Right. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do give us a thumbs up below and do not forget to subscribe. Brand new videos just like this every day of the week. And if you're looking for another channel where I do also daily videos in a top 10 format, do check out my other channel, Top 10s. You'll find a link to that below. And as always, thank you for watching. Guys, I'm definitely glad he answered this question. I will say I do like I I, I love him as a presenter because he's uh, extremely just to the point with everything that we encounter. So I respect that. Um, I now know, a, I guess, a slight differences between these beings, right? Um, hornets, okay, super aggressive. Wasps, also super aggressive. Late summer, no. Um, there apparently are way too many bees to even attempt to count on one hand, okay? Noted uh, in terms of like bee species. Um I still would like to know if that the the giant one that that you know um, flies around the, my backyard basically um, the multiples of them they're everywhere guys I was you know my son was outside the other day and um, one of them got really close to him and and uh, my wife was like oh leave that thing alone don't worry it doesn't sting okay so I don't know okay because I, I mean honestly I hope that it's not one of these stinging things right it probably is. Probably is. Um, I don't want to have to get an exterminator because I do like the fact that bees exist. I don't. We need them on this planet, um, you know, to to cultivate all the avocados and almonds that uh, you know certain groups consume lots of. 
right? But I, <laughs> but all right, guys, listen, now let me know in the comments uh, the next one of these from him that I should be checking out, and I will get into that as soon as I possibly can, all right? And listen, you guys all have an absolutely amazing day, and enjoy your day thoroughly.